Now, coming to our vaccination system. If you want to get lifelong immunity for a disease, you must suffer from the disease. That's the best way to do it. Because your body produces antibodies. And many of them may not be lifelong. Now to say that the present chemically altered vaccines produced from various sources having such preservatives which are very dangerous to the human body that you should load a young child, newborn child. In the United States about 59 vaccines are given to a child. I don't know, I'm not a vaccine specialist, but to me, to me, as a human being, it looks horrible. It looks really horrible. Beyond that, I don't want to say because I'm not a vaccine scientist. And the data that they give you, the statistics that they give you, is not the true set statistics. It's, it's all because the drug companies selling vaccines want to manufacture statistics to show that vaccines are very good. But there are people who have not vaccinated their children, I met one young lady today and I've got a large collection of them. They're all very happy and I'm happy for them. The one vaccine or one vaccination system that prevented one disease from this world, only one disease, that is smallpox, is a vaccination of the Ayurvedic system. For thousands of years we've been practicing it here. I won't go again into the detail because it's a very big detail. If you want to know, there is an article of mine called Indian vaccination system for smallpox. You can read it on the internet. And if you want to know, if you are one of those scientists, the original writing about the Indian vaccination system by a British scientist in 1747 is still there in the Royal College of Physicians of London in a glass case. You can go and see that. His name is Dr. T. Z. Hallwell. He was an FRCP London FRS, a great scientist who came to India in 1742 and stayed on for 20 years studying the vaccination system in the Bengal which the Bengal is almost the northeast of India and Burma today and he went back and reported to the king that the Indian vaccination system protects against smallpox and they modified it slightly and they have done it that's the only thing that I know is 100% good rest I don't know is the answer now you said everybody is mental disease. Yes, it's very easy. You can make everybody a mental disease. It's very easy. Because if you say, if you now go to the bus stand and come back and again go to the bus stand, I can say you're a compulsive. So from that statistics, 50% is not, almost 100% of the people are mental diseases. You understand that? So I can make, this is called disease mongering. You can always get more people included in the disease category. So I don't think the statistics that they have given you that 50% of Bangalore people are all mentally not all right is not correct. Now, the, what are the next questions? Doctor, uh, there's one question here. Yeah. Sir, I just wanted to know, I mean, uh, as uh, vitamins and minerals are available in the, you know, nature in the form of vegetables and the, you know, uh, in the form of uh, fruits, but do you I mean, recommend uh, taking uh, vitamin and mineral supplements, particularly after the age of 60. I mean, is it required? I mean, or not? These uh, mineral and vitamin supplements, tablets. I didn't understand your question at all. Uh, madam, you repeat that loudly. So his question is, there are many vitamins uh, and minerals available in fruits and vegetables. Then why do we take tablets, vitamin tablets? Are they really important? Fascinating question. I will give you a study. Fascinating question. Wait, wait, wait. Keli Hogi. And he specifies particularly after an age of 60, wait, we are wait, all recommended. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'll, I'll, I'll answer it. There was a study done in Canada of 50,000 post-menopausal women divided into two groups, 25,000 each. And the government supplied free vitamins for 25,000 people and free extra fruit and vegetable for another 25,000 people continued to see them for 25 more long years. Did you understand now? At the end, what was shown was the vitamin taking people had three times more cancer, four times more heart attack, and they died much before the fruit and vegetable taking people. The reason is the chemicals that we give in vitamins are reductionist chemicals. But the chemical vitamins that are in the fruits are holistic fruits and vegetables. So I'll give you one example. If you take vitamin C tablets every day, 
100 milligrams every day. In five years' time, your chance of getting kidney cancer goes up by 5%. But if you take the same vitamin C in a tomato every day, if you're a healthy person, take one tomato every day, your chance of getting cancer goes down by 5%. So I would suggest that people take only natural source. But today's natural source is also chemical. You must have so much of spraying chemicals, feeding the plant with chemicals. So you can grow some fruits in your own kitchen garden, which is clean. And I tell you, it's a beautiful source of vitamins. And don't take any, any supplements, chemical supplements. Spend about two to three hours in the sun, you get enough vitamin D. And don't take D tablet or injection. So, you see, nature has given everything. Did you, did you really understand that poem I told you? Little do we see in nature that is ours, who wrote William Wordsworth. That is called intuition. You, if your cat is having a tummy ache, it knows which grass to eat in the, in the garden. When you have a tummy ache, you come to me, I give you a chemical poison, and then tummy ache becomes another ache somewhere else. Okay? Answered. Next. The next question. Sir, hello, hello. Hello, here. I'm speaking. Sir, my name is Vijay Chandapur, engineer. Sir, please be audible. Hold the mic closer. Yeah. Sir, now my question is, where science ends, silence starts speaking about the inner engineering. Comments, please. Where science ends, silence starts speaking about the inner engineering. Comments, please. I don't understand. What is where the science ends... Where the science ends... Silence starts speaking where about the inner engineering. Where silence si starts speaking about inner engineering. Where science ends. Jaggi was there, inner engineering. Yes, <laughs> that's the question. Yes, 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 yes. You are absolutely right. You engineer yourself to be a better human being. All the science ends there. Thank you very much. There's another question. Is it possible to stop my daily medication and be well? I had a heart attack five years ago and I have two stents. Uh, daily taking medicines like Cardace, Aspirin, various other medicines. Is it possible? Very good question. Now let me tell you something. Because I have given this lecture, don't go home and stop all your drugs. Because when once you start taking drugs and on drugs for a long time, your body is dependent on those drugs. So if you want to stop any one of your drugs, go back to your doctor and then ask him. And under his guidance, you can taper off and stop. Don't stop suddenly. Supposing the doctor says, okay, this drug can stop. But if I have to tell you about each one of those drugs that you mentioned there, they are all dangerous drugs. But since you have two stents inside, you are not a normal human being. You have an additional thing there. So you have to take drugs because the stents otherwise will attract clots. So you have to take blood thinners. Unfortunate. But somebody has put a stent inside. I am not saying stent is scientific, but it is there. And as long as it is there. And you think your heart is fine because statistics says if you are alive and healthy one year after your heart attack, you probably are like any other human being in society. You may not get another heart attack. Five years is a good time. You are a good man, but if you want to stop your...